Hey everyone, John here, and today I'm going to show you how to add some more features to our uh, Stencil Space Invaders game. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change how uh, the core gameplay works a little bit. We're going to, instead of just having a set number of enemies, we are going to make the enemies spawn, and we're going to make them t come down towards us. And I think that will make the game a little bit more fun, a little bit less just like, shoot the enemies and you win. Um, it'll be more of a game and less of a physics test sort of thing. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is open up the level and go into our events. So when our enemy killed function here, for now, we are just going to make this impute victory counter by zero. So that will just remove our winning sort of from the equation so we don't have to worry about that right now. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the enemy random spawning code. Actually, no, first, let's edit the enemy so that he goes, the enemy goes down. So we're going to make, in the enemy, we're going to add event basics when updating. And I'm going to rename this event to move. And let's see, so I'm going to go into actors, motion, and I'm going to set the Y speed to negative one that should make him go down but if not, it might make him go up so it's always good to test to make sure just want to make sure that I'm not making him go the wrong direction because that would be weird I believe it should be not negative That's what I thought. And they're going too slow. So I'm going to make it something like 5 and see if that works. Five should be good. It'll be decently fast, but not too fast. push you off the screen so another thing we're good that we're gonna do is go into the ship and make it so the ship cannot be pushed so that should be good I'm gonna test that and make sure that works and you also notice we didn't die so we didn't die when the enemy hit us so we'll do that as well although perhaps not in this video I think it's too long we'll see all right that seems like a good subject. I'm gonna let this one try to push me. Yep, this goes through. Perfect. Alright. That should be good. Alright, so the next thing we are gonna do is we're going to make the level spawn enemies. So we're gonna make a new event. Um, and we can make it a every n seconds. And I'm going to rename this to enemy spawn. I think every three seconds is good. So every three seconds, I'm going to create. So we need to create. This is good right here. Create, and we're going to make it an enemy. Actually, I know what we're going to do first. First, let's go into attributes. Actually, we'll make it a game attribute. And we'll create a new game attribute. We're going to call it enemy. Or let's see. Say number to spawn. Make it type number, initial value, three is probably good. All right, so now number to spawn. All right, so in the beginning it's three, because we set the initial value to three. If you didn't, then you can go to attributes. And, oh, sorry, it's not in there. It should be. Oh, no, I know. If you, uh, if you didn't set it, then you have to hit click show game attributes here, and then you can set it So from this number right there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into flow and go into loops, and then we're going to do a repeat x times like that, and then we're going to drag our drag our number to spawn in there. So repeat number to spawn times. So if it's three, then we want to spawn three enemies. So we'll repeat our spawn function three times. That's perfect. So now back to search and create. Create actor type, so we're going to make it our enemy. 
So let's see, X we want to be random, random spot on the screen. Y should probably be, I'm gonna try 10 for now. That might be too low, we'll see. Might be too high even. All right, so for the X, I'm gonna go into numbers and text and grab this random integer between. So zero, and then I'm going to grab a minus here. And screen or uh, scenes to be in view screen width yes scenes view so blank minus screen width sorry screen width minus blank uh, and I'm gonna go into actors properties and get width of actor because remember uh, it goes by the left the goes where the actor is goes by the left side so. If the left side is touching the right side of the screen, then it's going. The actor is going to be completely off the screen. So we do screen width minus the width of actor to make it the right side. All right, so that should be good. And I'll do that every three seconds. So it'll repeat that. So let's test that and see if that works. Should work. So I forgot to remove the original enemies, but it is spawning every seven, every three seconds. It's spawning three of them in a random spot, so that's perfect. All right, but it's not adding any because we forgot to add that. So yeah, I definitely think this is better. This is more of a game, less of a. I didn't want to make it faster. Depends. But yeah, this is more of a game than less of just a certain part of the Alright, so let's add, let's go into numbers and text and grab this increment. So every three seconds, the first thing we're going to do, actually, no, we'll do it after. Increment. I'm sorry, the increment doesn't work for that. Okay, so we're going to grab this. Game attributes, setters. We're going to set number to spawn equal to the numbers in text plus so and then go into getters and drag that into there. So number to spawn, set number to spawn to number to spawn plus one. That will add one to number to spawn. So now we can test this. And then you should see that every every single time it gets more enemies. It'll start with three and then it'll go to four, then five, and then it'll just keep going up and up. And we could make a limit, maybe, to make sure it doesn't get uh, too crazy, but it should be fine for now. So again, there's a wave that I'm going to delete after this. So it starts with three, and four, then five. I think what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code and remove it and then I'm going to make a new event and it's going to be in every n seconds and I'm going to rename this to more enemies so every let's try six, no 12 seconds so that'll be every four rounds then I can right click paste so I don't need this whole thing obviously just get rid of that part. So every four rounds, it'll add one to the enemy count. That seems good. Or yeah, that should be good. And then in the scene, I'm going to grab the select tool here and just drag a box and delete all those by hitting the delete key. So okay, and test that now. Should be a little bit harder and a little bit better, uh, a little bit better game mechanics there. It should be should be decent. And then I think what we'll do next is we'll do score, score next. All right, so there's three. Still three. Still three. Might want to add one to that since it's 
spawns, 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 spawns. Yeah, I'm excited. Now it's room four. So let's do score next. So remember in the level we already had that convenient code that every time an enemy is killed it runs. So we're going to make a new variable, a new game attribute, create game attribute. We're going to call it score. Number default value is zero. That's perfect. So I'm going to do so the same thing. I'm going to set score to, and I can go into getters and grab this for future reference. And then I can just go in here and do math and grab that if I'm instead of going into numbers and text. So set score to score plus one. So now I'm going to make a drawing event because we want to draw the score on the screen. So again, so I'm going to go into styles and set the current font to, we'll use our default font for now. And then I am going to, so when drawing, so I'm going to go into drawing and then draw the text. We're going to make this text be something. We're going to do five five is probably good. And it's going to be the text. Let's see, I'm going to need a plus. So I'm going to get a, let's see. I believe there's in text, there should be, yes. And so I'm going to do score colon space. So the space is because if we just put our number in here, then it'll just be score, colon, then no space, and then the number, and that wouldn't look very good. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to, on this one, I'm just going to do as text because I'm going to do a number. And then I'm going to go into game attributes and put in score in here. So score and score as text. So that should be good. It should show up now in the top left corner because it's 5-5 five, five, and zero, 0 is the top left, top left corner. I wanted to put a little bit of margin in there, um, a little bit of padding, just so it wasn't like square with the top left corner. All right, score is zero. Perhaps that's too much on the Y, but let's change it. Score one, score two, score three, score four, score five, score six, seven. Yep, so it's that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So that works very nicely. Like I said, I'll probably change this position to be more like Y0. And X5 was fine. Let's see how that looks. So it's just sort of customizing it the way you want it to look. And you can change your font, you could change your what you say, you could say points or score or whatever you want to say. It's um it's about customization and what you feel like is best for your game. But I think that looks bit better. That's perfect. I think. So now we are going to make the enemy go in a random direction. So I'm going to go into actors motion and then in the enemy setup event I'm going to set the velocity to direction and degrees Make sure that I have the physics right. All right. Yes, this should work. All right So for the degrees I want it to be sort of random speed I'm gonna try five for now. So for the degrees I'm gonna go into numbers and text and grab this random integer and I believe on an actor zero is right I'm not positive, but I want it to be somewhere within uh, 60 degrees of straight down. So I'm going to try, so 90 would be straight down in that case. So I'm going to try 30 and 130, or 150. 
130 and 150. So that should be good. It should make the enemy go down towards the end, towards the player. And if not, then I have to fix some numbers. All right, so speed is sort of slow, but that is what I wanted. And I might want to slip that range up a little bit too. A little bit willy-nilly, so I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it between 60 and, I'm just subtracting 30, make it between 60 and 120. I've subtracted 30 from the range on each side by adding to the at far left and, and subtracting from the right. All right. All right, that'll probably be about better. Are going a bit slow, but I am also not taking into account the fact that they're going to start spawning more. They are just spawning in fives. I think I can go a little bit faster. Try seven. Okay. So that's good for that. And I think that's good for this video. So I'm just going to test the speed change I made and then I think that that will be good for this video and in the next video we will cover hopefully finishing the game adding it so that the, end, so the uh, player can die adding uh, some final touches and such just to make the game look better and feel better or yeah I think that's a better speed for them it definitely seems like a better speed alright I think that is perfect for this video and I will cover, like I said, I'll cover finishing touches in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please uh, leave a like and subscribe and comment what I should do next. Thanks for watching. Bye.